If you have the special ability to see in the dark, then you can thank your friend Vitamin A. However, that's not its only job. Today we'll be diving deeper into what Vitamin A really is. In our last video, we discussed what a vitamin was, so that leaves us with the A. Uh, the A doesn't really have a meaning, there's no molecule or substance. It's just an A that signifies that it was the first discovered vitamin, which is kind of cool, I guess. What vitamin A actually is, is retinol, a long rope of carbon and hydrogen with a carbon ring on one end, methyl groups sprinkled throughout, and a hydroxyl group on the other end. We cannot produce this molecule on our own, so we must acquire it through other means. Vitamin A begins here, in orange and yellow vegetables and leafy greens. However, these plants do not have retinol in them. Instead, they are full of provitamin A, in the forms of pigments called carotenoids, which gives the plants their vibrant colors. Colors may seem unrelated to an essential vitamin, but if you look at the chemical structure, they are extremely similar. It just takes a little bit of tweaking to transform this molecule from being a pigment to working as a vitamin. That process begins when we eat. The vegetables go through the digestive process, and in the small intestine, they mix with bile salts and lipids so that the alpha-carotene, beta-carotene, and beta-cryptoxanthin can dissolve. Without lipids, none of these pigments would be absorbed because vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. Now, in the form of a chylomicron, they move up to the liver where all the chemical reactions take place. Once in the liver, the lipid barrier is dissolved and the enzymes begin to work their magic. Beta-carotene 15 15 prime oxygenase 1 and beta-carotene 9 prime 10 prime oxygenase 2 cleave the carotenoids into retinol also known as vitamin A aldehyde because of the aldehyde group on the end. Now, the body has a choice. It can either create retinol or retinoic acid. Retinol can be stored in the form of retinol esters, where retinol combines with an acid to stay in the liver, and if it's needed, it can be converted back into retinol and into retinol. That brings us back to the other option, retinoic acid. This is the most active form of vitamin A. It is responsible for general growth and development, but more specifically hindbrain development in the fetal stages and the creation of sperm. But that has nothing to do with eyes, you may be asking. And it won't if we don't bring up retinol again. Retinol doesn't just create other molecules, it has its own function. Retinol can bind with rhodopsins found on the rods within the eyes. Rods are best used to see in low light environments, and with the presence of retinol, Absorbing the light on the rhodopsins, the retinol can change forms and send electrical signals that will be processed by the brain. The more retinol, the more likely that a retinol will be activated by the small amounts of light, granting you a better vision in the dark. Vitamin A does have some other functions, like cell differentiation in stem cells to determine what the cell will become, keeping the skin and eyes moist by regulating the various glands in the skin, creating glycoproteins in red blood cells, and maintaining the skin and immune cells to keep us protected from infection. So having a lot of vitamin A would seem like a good thing, but too much of it will be harmful to your health. Hypervitaminosis A will cause you to have various skin conditions, sensitivity to light, liver damage, osteoporosis, hypercalcemia, and kidney damage due to that hypercalcemia, and finally keratinemia, which will turn your skin a yellow-orange. So you really will be looking like a carrot if you eat too many of them. But don't let that scare you into taking too little of vitamin A, because hypovitaminosis A will bring you other problems, including, but not limited to, dry skin and eyes, vulnerability to infection, and nyctalopia, which is more commonly known as night blindness. But I haven't even told you how much you should have or how you can get it, so that's what I'll do now. The recommended daily amount of vitamin A is about 900 micrograms, or 0 0.0009 grams. To put that into perspective, a grain of sand weighs 5 times more than that. Now that's pretty crazy, but if we look at the upper tolerable limit, we are only allowed 0 0.003 grams. Still, the sand weighs more. One and a half times more, in fact. Those numbers seem like nothing at all, and they really aren't. But they are extremely important. Luckily, our food doesn't contain much vitamin A or provitamin A, meaning that overdosing on it is extremely unlikely. 
The best way to get Pro Vitamins A is to eat carrots, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, spinach, and papaya. If you want to skip all that and get straight to the retinoids, go for cod and beef liver. But be warned, animal liver contains a lot of vitamin A, so I hope you don't plan on scoffing down a whole cow liver. Oh, and there's always vitamin supplements, but that's kind of obvious. This concludes our section on vitamin A. The next video in the series will be on the vitamin D complex. But until next time, don't be a vitamin overachiever or underachiever. Just being a cheaper, it's better off that way.